The readings today speak about suffering under injustice. Jeremiah is suffering because of the message that God has given him to proclaim. The writer of Psalm 69 is aware of his own failings, but is also in the midst of rejection and humiliation and scorn by others, to the extent that he feels like he's drowning, and he's angry and he's in pain and distress. This is something that many of us may have experienced. While it's something that's very much in the news at the moment, it's also something that is always there, even when the attention of the media isn't focused on it. We may experience persecution from people who are very different from us, or even from our own friends and family. We may have been subject to prejudice, discrimination, persecution, even violence. To be clear, racism has no place in the kingdom of God. We are one family in Christ, brothers and sisters of the same Heavenly Father. Yet here on earth we live in a fallen world with wickedness all around us and, if we're honest, within us. And how do we deal with that? What do the scriptures have to say that could help us? Firstly, we're commanded to realize that it's to be expected. Jesus warns his disciples to expect that just as he had been maligned, so will we be. Evil people will always be evil towards others. Their evil deeds are a function of the evil that is within them. So it's to be expected. Bullies will always be bullies. Peter, who himself had suffered a lot of persecution, having been harshly beaten and wrongfully imprisoned, writes his first letter to the Christians in Bithynia who were suffering prejudice. He says to them, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. Do not be surprised. This has been the experience of Christians all through history and throughout the world today. Secondly, we need to listen to the call to follow the way of the cross. We have a master who calls us to follow his example. Jesus invites us to take up our cross and follow him. To suffer for doing good is to follow Jesus on the way of the cross. When he and John had been flogged for being Christians, Peter rejoiced because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name of Jesus. He writes, But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Now, of course, we need to make sure that if we're going to suffer, it's because we're doing good. Again, Peter writes, it is better to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any kind of criminal or even as a meddler. Thirdly, we need to have no fear. Even if someone bruises or kills our bodies, Jesus said, they cannot touch our souls or quench our spirit. But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed, Peter says. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. Psalm 69 says, They give me vinegar for my thirst. And of course, this was quite literally true for Jesus on the cross. He is our model and our example. To follow Jesus to the cross would be a foolish thing to do, if we didn't know that that way leads to through death to resurrection life. And then we need to turn to God the Father who cares about us and to rely on him. We have a Father who cares about every detail of our lives. 
And the psalmist reminds himself of God's goodness, loving kindness and many mercies. He asks that God turn his face towards him and draw near to him. He asks to be redeemed and delivered. Peter says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. The truth is that even if our families were to disown us, God never will. Then we need to just continue to do what is good, to stand up and to speak out. We have a master to follow, we have a father who cares, and we have a gospel to proclaim. Jeremiah says that he Because of the persecution, he tries to keep his mouth shut and his head down, but it just doesn't work because the truth of God is burning inside him and it just comes out. He has to declare it. And Peter says to the persecuted Christians, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behaviour in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. So then, those who suffer for doing God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. And then lastly, we need to know that justice will come. We have a master to follow, a father who cares. We have a gospel to proclaim, and we have a judge who will bring justice. If it were only in this world that we had hope, we were to be pitied above all people. Dear friends, there is a day when justice will be served by the perfect judge. Sooner or later, everything will come into the light of God's justice. Every secret slander will be heard in the courts of God. Every act of racism, every injury inflicted, every persecution. Even now, our very hearts are already open to God. And in that day, if we have been true to Christ, he will be true to us. If we have spoken up for his cause, then he will speak up for ours. If we are faithful in this world, he is faithful to us in the next. Peter concludes his letter with these words. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after this momentary suffering, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. So, dear friends, Let's follow the Master, turn to the Father, proclaim the gospel of truth and peace, and let us trust everything to the justice of God. May we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your love for us. Thank you, Lord, that even though we travel through this wicked world, yet, Lord, you have a destination and a glory in store for us. Help us to hold fast to doing what is right and speaking what is true. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.